Today, we are going to talk about double and triple bonds. Okay. Um, in some scenarios, we're going to look at our compounds and get our total number of electrons, and then we're going to give everybody their the external atoms their eight, or if it's hydrogen, their two electrons. And then we're going to go, ooh, central atom doesn't have enough electrons yet. So in that case, we're going to have to start swinging some pairs of electrons to make sure that everybody has eight. Now, yesterday with the homework, all the structures had single bonds. What a single bond is one pair of shared electrons, so to speak. When we talk about double bonds and triple bonds, a double bond is two shared pairs, where a triple bond is three shared pairs. We cannot go above a triple bond. Uh, we haven't talked about the mechanics of sigma and pi bonds. We'll do that in AP, but just, just know, believe, that you can't have anything greater than a triple bond. Wasn't that a great lecture? Let's do some examples. All right, so let's take a look at some examples. And sadly, a lot of the things that we're doing today is a repeat of what we did yesterday with one small augmentation. So the first thing that I want you to do is make sure that you are still writing down the total number of electrons. I'm not so worried about finding the difference in the electron activities. On the homework, you will. But on here, I just want to make sure that we're getting the concept here. So we have two carbons, and how many electrons does each carbon bring? Four. So let's get a total here. And then we have four hydrogens, and each electron, I'm sorry, each hydrogen brings one electron. So that gives us a total of 12 electrons. Who is going to be my central atom or atoms? Yeah, carbon always goes in the middle. So we'll go ahead and say, okay, well, we got our two carbons there and there. And since we have four hydrogen, go ahead and distribute the hydrogens evenly amongst the carbon. So if you want to put one there, one there, one over here, and then like one right there. That's cool. Don't ever do this. Don't ever put it in between. Okay. That makes it a central atom. And it's actually being shared between two atoms, and it just it can't do that. Because it only has the capability of having two electrons or one um, pair of electrons being shared. Go ahead and give it its electrons. So let's go ahead and do this. So satisfy the external atoms. So in that case here, all the hydrogens are happy. They have their two electrons. Now, how many electrons do I have represented right now? Eight. I need to add four more. So if you go like this and say, okay, that's cool. I don't know why you do that, but if you did that, um, one of them is, but the other one is not. So when we look at, say, this carbon right here, how many electrons does it have? Six. How many does this one have? Eight. And I, I have this saying, the one doing a Lewis dot structures. The one with eight is the one that you're going to manipulate. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to take this pair, and actually I'm going to need to redraw it. Take that pair and then put it in between. Now, keep this in mind, whether it's on accident or on purpose. If you put electrons between elements, whether it's central or external atoms, they are sharing them. It's going to count for the mix. So how many electrons does this carbon now have? Eight. And that's why it's a good idea to go ahead and circle it up and say, okay, it's got its eight electrons. How many electrons does this carbon have? It has eight as well. So when we have our eight, Everybody's happy. And then go ahead and circle it up for the hydrogens as well. Okay. Now, looking at the partial charges, okay, they're not sharing these electrons evenly. Um, carbon has a value, actually, let's put it up here. Carbon's a value of 2.5. Hydrogen's a value of 2.1, so it's a difference of 0.4. So who is going to be partial negative here? Carbon, because it has a higher value. So we assign the the more negative charge to the element that has the higher electronegative value. And then hydrogen is partial positive. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so again, that pair right here, actually, I'll do that. So the pair of electrons right here were originally up here. So, and that's just where I placed it. But that gave this carbon eight electrons, but this one only had six. 
So we needed to swing a pair over. It would have been nice if both came over. So we need to swing and have a double bond in that case. That's just where I initially put it. Yeah. So once you are drawing this out, it's always a good idea. Satisfy the external atoms. Whatever's left, dump on the central atom, or in this case, central atoms. And then look at it and ask yourself, does everybody have eight? If not, start moving pairs of electrons until everybody has eight. Okay. Let's do another. Ooh, that's a favorite this time of year, carbon monoxide. All right, so let's get to no total number of electrons. Carbon brings how many electrons? Four. And oxygen brings six. That gives us a ten, total of ten electrons. Now, we only have two elements, but I still like to say somebody is a central atom. If I were to say somebody was a central atom, who would I put in the middle? Carbon. Carbon, yeah. So carbon's in the middle. And by doing that, you can still go ahead and say, okay, well, let's satisfy the external atoms. So if I give my electrons, or make sure that oxygen, which is an external atom, give it its eight electrons, then I can say, okay, I've got eight electrons on there. How many electrons do I need total? Ten. So I'm going to put the others on the quote-unquote central atom. Now, don't do this. Don't put those electrons. Don't put those electrons here. Why? That would give oxygen 10, and we don't want that. So we want to make sure that we have no more than 8 electrons. And we will never have, as an external atom, we will never have more than 8 electrons. So let me ask you, how many electrons does carbon have right now? Four. Very good. The key here is, whether it's on accident or on purpose, if it's between... They're sharing. So carbon right now has four electrons, but it needs how many? Eight. So we can take a pair, maybe, swing it in there. So now, how many electrons does oxygen have? Eight. Still has eight. How many does carbon have? Six. So we need to take another pair from oxygen. And I'm going to move it from here to here. Okay. How many electrons does oxygen now have? How many does carbon have? Isn't that awesome? So by doing that and saying, okay, oxygen has eight, carbon had that one pair plus the one that was being shared, the one with eight is the one that we're going to manipulate. So we start swinging pairs until everybody had eight. Notice I didn't add any more electrons. I can't get creative and start adding more dots when we don't have them. So you have to work with what you got. Keep that in mind. All right. And then the electronegative values, carbon's 2.5, oxygen's 3.5. So who is partial negative here? Oxygen's partial negative, carbon's partial positive. Okay. All right, and then back to the notes for a moment. All right, so... Get to touch that. So now we're looking at what's called polyatomics. Okay. Good news. Still the same stuff. However, when we look at a polyatomic, all polyatomics have a charge associated with it. Like in this case, what is this? SO4? Sulfate. And sulfate has a negative two charge. The reason why it has a negative two charge is because the number of electrons that came with the sulfate were not enough for everybody to have eight electrons. So some metal or metals donated two electrons to make sure that sulfate had enough, so to speak. Now, I went ahead and put solid circles and empty circles and X's on here. You'll never have to do that. That was when I first started teaching, just got bored. What I had was the solids represented the electrons that came with the oxygens, the hollow ones were the electrons that came with the sulfur, and the X's are the donated electrons. We don't care about that. I don't care about that now. All I know is that we're all bringing electrons to the party. Somebody donated two electrons, and that made us happy. That's what I want. But do realize the brackets still mean the same thing. It has a different number of electrons from that which we started, and the charge tells us how many was either added to the mix, or if it's a positive charge, how many were removed from the mix. Okay. Does everybody have the blank there? 
did that blank. I think it's donating. All right, so let's take a look at the first practice problem. All right, so ClO4, chlorate, or perchlorate, okay? And you'll never have a carbon with an iodine, so that's always going to be chlorine. So how many electrons does chlorine bring? Seven, good. And we have four oxygens, and each oxygen brings six. Now the minus one means what? There you go. Something donated an electron, or somebody gave us an electron. So we have to include that. And keep this in mind. We always have to have an even number of electrons. Okay. And in this case, it's 32. If that one electron were not there, we'd have an odd number. And I mean by odd is 31 electrons. But in this case, somebody gave us one. Now everybody can be happy. All right, so who is going to be my central atom in this case? Yeah. Chlorine. That's our one and only, or our singleton. So we'll put it in the middle, and then put the oxygens around. Then go ahead and put your dots in. How many electrons do I have shown? 32. Does everybody have eight? Yeah. All the oxygens have eight, and the chlorines even have eight. Okay, so that's why we circle here at the beginning to make sure that we can visualize that everybody has eight electrons. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but are we done? What do we need to do, David? Brackets. Because we have to tell everybody, we got a different number of electrons from that which we started. In other words, 31 of these electrons are due to the chlorine and the oxygen. Well, one of those, and we don't care which one, was donated. So we got to tell everybody that somebody donated to the cause here. And then, if you're doing the charges, uh, chlorine is like 2.0, oh boy. What is it? 3.0, thank you. And oxygen's 3.5, so, so the oxygen is negative, and the chlorine, in this case, is a positive. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's left. You're fine. Okay, so by making sure that the external atoms have their eight electrons, we are accidentally satisfying the chlorine. So whether it's on accident or on purpose. So like here, these electrons in between, they are sharing them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, let's take a look at another. Is this our last? Oh, we have two more. Good. All right, NH4, so nitrogen brings five electrons, and we have four hydrogen, and each brings one. What's that plus one mean? We're losing one. Good. So we have to subtract one. And if we did not subtract that one, we'd have an odd number. In that case, it would be nine. And then it gets really weird. Yeah, Nadi? Um, my screen is flashing like crazy. That means you're dying. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send you a tech here in a few minutes. All right, so we have a total of eight electrons. Who's going in the middle? Not hydrogen, so nitrogen, yeah. So nitrogen, and then put it around the horn here. And then hydrogen gets two, right? Why does hydrogen only get two, Celeste? Why? It only has an s orbital and no, no p orbitals. Good. So that's why hydrogen can only have two. And since we have our eight electrons, but we originally brought nine, still have to put the brackets around there and tell everybody, hey, we're now a donor in this case. And then circle them up. And nitrogen is a value of 3. And hydrogen is 2.1. So in this case, hydrogen's partial 
positive and nitrogens. Sorry, did I say hydrogen or nitrogen at first? Hydrogen's partial positive, nitrogen's partial negative. And last but not least, what's that? We have another one? Oh, okay. All right, so how many electrons does carbon bring? Four electrons, and we have three oxygen, and each of those brings six. What does the negative two mean? We add two more. Good. So in this case, 24? All right, so who's my central atom? Carbon. And then we'll put the oxygens however you want them. And let's go ahead and satisfy the external. Get in there. Get in there. My goodness. All right, 24. Are we done? Brackets, okay. Let's put the brackets around. Oh, carbon does not have eight. Very good. So what do we need to do? From where? From an oxygen. Very good. So in this case, if you want to take the pair from over here, awesome. You want to take the pair from over here? Can't do that. So let's, I can't move that one. Take one of those and move it down. That's great. Or if you take that pair and move it over. The reality is... All three of those take place. And the situation is called a resonance structure. So when you look at it, scoot on down there. So when you look at, say, some of you were saying, oh, I want to take the pair from, ooh, one of these, no, nope, say from the top to the bottom, that's cool, or bring one over, or bring one over. The reality is that pair of electrons keeps moving around depending on the situation. This is what's called a resonance structure. So if you wrote your Lewis structure where you had the double bond on the top oxygen and somebody else wrote it on the left and somebody else wrote it on the right, you're all right. Okay. So that's the neat thing about resonance and that that pair does actually change. Now in AP chemistry, I would require you to write all three of these, but in here, one of those is great. All right. Um, that was all of those. Let's see here. So the homework tonight, I hear there's a few questions here. Look at what, worksheet number number two. I don't know why it says worksheet number one. There's a couple on there. Yeah. 21? Is that all? Okay. 21 questions. Yeah, I should have made four. I don't know what I was thinking. Daggone it. Yeah. Dad nabbit. 21's a good number. I like that. I do have a... Well, I was going very slow. Now, I do have a video if you need to see the evens. And... Oh, Luke. I can't even believe you'd say that. So that'll be good practice, uh, very good practice for the quiz on Thursday, or sorry, Friday, Friday, my bad. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. All right, be productive here.